All right, hi everyone. I'm gonna be doing a video today on uh, changing the lower leg oil, the lower gear oil in my 1982 Johnson 99. Picked it up uh, a couple years back. Um, it's been great to me so far. I've done one lower leg oil change since I've owned it and it's been just over a year. So I'm gonna do one uh, before I take it out this season. So, First I'll just show you the two slotted screws. This is the top vent hole and then the bottom slotted screw is where we're going to drain and then fill from once we've drained out the old junk. Alright. Alright so when you're ready to drain make sure you've got a nice big container to catch your lower leg oil as it drains. Start by removing the top vent screw so that air can get behind the old oil. Be very careful not to damage the little seal. I don't know if you can see that. It'll focus on it, but there is a little washer that's very important on these screws. If those washers are broken or particularly ratty looking, you're going to want to replace them because you'll end up with water mixing with your lower leg oil and that means trouble. Now, we'll remove the lower drain plug. All right, now as you can see, the oil is a little bit milky looking, which means there's probably been some water mixing in with it. Um, all the more reason to change it more frequently um, as well as check your seals in your lower legs. So I'm going to be pulling the uh, lower leg later and doing the water pump housing. While I'm in there I'll have a look at the seals to see if there's any obvious places where water is able to get in. It's a little milkier than I would have liked. And I'll just wait for it to all drain. Hi everyone, so I've been waiting about almost 10 minutes now. Um, at the point where my milky old oil stopped, I uh, went ahead and put just a, not even an ounce of new oil at the top there, uh, in the top screw, where is it, right there, uh, and just let it kind of flow out, taking the last little remnants of the old oil out with it. You can kind of see it's mixed together. I'll let that finish draining now, probably another five, 10 minutes. This stuff is fairly, fairly thick oil, so it does take time to drain. Don't be afraid to let it keep dripping. Um, and it's, I don't know, maybe it's just me, but uh, I expected there to be more, but it's actually very little. Uh, only a couple ounces uh, of oil actually fit in the lower gear case. So um, let it keep dripping. All right, so after another 10 minutes or so of letting it drain, kind of tipping the motor back side to side, trying to get the uh, last little remnants out of the bottom of the gear case uh, com uh, compartment. Uh, looks like we're all done, I've given it a quick wipe. Um, I wanted to specify before I was saying there was a couple ounces of this oil, uh, there's actually nine ounces of uh, gear oil in this motor, or 266 milliliters, so, um, if you're buying them in one quart, approximately one liter containers, you'll get three and a bit uh, changes uh, out of each container. Um, it's a very inexpensive uh, consumable for this motor and uh, something that should be done, uh, I believe the manufacturer recommends every um, 100 hours or, uh, or every year. Uh, whichever comes first. So I never use my motor that often, but uh, I usually do it at the end of the winter when I'm about to start uh, using it again. Uh, so, now that we've got all the old oil out, we're gonna leave the uh, both screws out. Um, and then what we're gonna do is take our little, uh, our new oil. Now I've gone ahead and spent an extra 10 bucks on this little pump, um, completely unnecessary, but it sure helps with um, minimizing your mess. Uh, they sell them in kits. I think I paid 12 bucks for this uh, at the marine store there. 
screws onto your, your quart of oil and uh, it, this thread screws right into the bottom of your outboard. Um, it does fit your standard outboard fittings and it also comes with a metric conversion if you happen to be doing an oil job on a Japanese motor. Uh, so once you're screwed in, it's really, really simple. You just pump the new oil in and uh, you're just going to keep pumping slowly. You can hear it kind of gurgling up until you see the new oil come out the top hole. And uh, it's pretty idiot proof. You can't really overfill these. Uh, once you do start to get oil puking out of the top hole, just wait until it stops. And that is the capacity. You can also buy these uh, lower leg oil containers in squeezable plastic containers with uh, a little cone shaped nozzle on them. Uh, and they're they work the same way as this. You just jam the cone into the lower uh, hole and squeeze until you get oil puking out the top. Um, I just find it makes a mess and uh, like I said for an extra 10 bucks I prefer to do it this way. It should be getting close to full. About a quarter of the way, yeah, there you go. So you can see now that I've got new oil puking out the top. All right, so at this point, you simply wait until the top finishes spewing out old oil. I mean, sorry, new oil. Okay, so now that our new oil has stopped puking out the top, I'm gonna to go ahead and replace the top slotted screw along with gasket. Again, make sure if the gasket looks worn or cracked or is particularly brittle that you replace them. Again, extremely inexpensive, but could save you a lot of time and money. Also, like anything else, you don't need to over tighten these, just snug them. I don't know what the torque specs are, but uh, you don't need to be breaking these off. Okay, so you're replacing the top bolt. The reason for that is when I go and unplug the bottom here, uh, in order to replace the bottom screw, um, I'll have some vacuum now keeping the oil in the uh, gear case as opposed to it all spurting out. So, just back this off. And as you can see, aside from a little bit of oil on my fingers, I didn't even lose a drop. So, that is it. Changing the gear oil on your lower leg of your 1982 Johnson 9.9 .9 horse motor. Thanks everyone, have a good day.